You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a successful motivational speaker and trusted life coach, Nancy knows how you can live the life you want regardless of the challenges you face. Although she's legally blind, Nancy's mission is to inspire others to overcome obstacles and live life full out. Call in at 800-333-0001 to ask Nancy for advice on topics such as relationships, finances, business, health, and more. Just call 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri, and very happy and excited to be here with you, even though our topic today is a heavy one. Today, we're actually talking about being terminally ill and and what that looks like, you know, when we finally get to the end of our life and we don't know when that is. It could be for some people early in their life and for others when they're well into their hundreds. There's no time or or sense as to when our life ends, but we want to live every day of our life full out in a big way. You know, there's a lot of songs out there that that motivate us to live full out every day and, and to maximize the time we have in our life and that's what we want to focus on today we're going to be having a very special guest though in our next segment rebecca van warmer who actually is terminally ill with cancer in very various spots of her body and she's gonna be sharing with us what her final days looks like and that could be very well just a month or two and we're also going to be taking your calls again that number is 800-333-0001 800-333-0001. And we want to hear from you. If you have a, any questions regarding today's show or need resources, please connect with us. That email is connect at livingfullout.com. Again, connect at livingfullout.com. You can also email us at that same website. Uh, I'm sorry, email. If you have a story that you think would be inspiring to our community, again, we'd love to hear from you. If you do want to catch today's show again, go to livingfullout.com, click on our radio show tab, and you'll be able to access this show and all of our collection of library of shows on our website there. So we're going to go to the phones line, phone lines now and talk to one of our first callers. Hello, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hello. Hi, thank you for calling. How can I help you today? Um, I recently just graduated college, and I'm a single mom, and I have a nine-month-old baby girl. I wanted to start my own photography business, but I find it hard to have the time to sit down and come up with a plan. I'm currently juggling and taking care of my daughter and working to support her. Right now I am settling, or just settling or whatever, when I want to have a successful career in photography. Is there any advice you can give to help me get to the motivation to go out and create this business while being a great parent. Well, you know what? I love that you're calling in about this. And first of all, number one job, being a great parent, right? And it sounds like you've got that one down. You're doing really good at that. You know, second to that is our own dreams and ambitions. And that's your photography business. A lot of times we feel like we want everything right now. Like I want the business right now. I want to start making money and doing what I love right now. But, the best things in life do take time to unfold, to, to, to come about. And so what, yeah. what I invite you to do is, is just, first of all, be good to yourself and be patient, okay? I'm a, I'm a business owner as well, so I've walked that walk with you, and I remember those early years. And the thing is, is what you want to do right now is, is plan and research. So I would do a couple of things. I would look to see if there are any photographers that are in the realm of what you would like to be doing. And number one is I would contact them and either interview them by phone or meet with them in person. And I would find out about the early days when they got started. What did they need? What equipment did they need? What space did they need? Any licensing? How did they start to develop their client database? Now, if you don't want to appear like competition to them, then pick a a similar photographer in another state or somewhere far from you that that the competition wouldn't feel like it's there, that you'd be non-threatening in interviewing them. But there's a lot of value in seeing where others have been as they built their business. Then as soon as you put together kind of that that list or what that looks like, then you want to put realistic time parameters around that. So some things are going to cost money, and you got to evaluate, okay, how much extra money each month can I put towards this new business? 
and just be realistic. Don't don't be hard on yourself or anything. If it takes you six months or even a year, just figure out what that amount is. And as you go, buy the things that you would need for that business. And then during that time, maybe you can be doing some freelance work or, or just start to network and maybe build a client database. Is that things that you feel you can do? Yeah. And, and honestly, I love that you have that entrepreneurial spirit. And what you always want to remember is what the end looks like, right? Someday yeah. down the line, you're going to have your beautiful baby who will become a, a toddler, who will become an adult, and you're going to have a great business and you're going to be happy. And you're going to be living your passion. And you got to keep your eye on the ball of what that looks like. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. Such Thank a great Thank you for call. having me. Oh, of <laughs> course, my dear. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye. What a, what a great question. And honestly, when we look at our life and what we want to achieve, for some people it is a business. And it's just thinking it through. What do we need to do to get to where we want to go? Uh, we're going to go back to the phone lines now. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi, thank you for calling. How how, how can we help you today? Hi. Um, well, I've had feelings for a close friend of mine for a while now, and it seems like he feels the same way. But whenever he's confronted about it, he makes excuses of not being ready for a relationship. Uh, but lately, I feel like he has been flirting with me on social media and it's sending me mixed signals. How can I handle this and what might it mean? Mm. Well, oh, oh, the days of that life. I love that. I love the <laughs> butterflies in the stomach. I love that. I don't know how he or she feels. Believe it or not, that's an, ex <laughs> that's an exciting time, although it seems frustrating. Here's the yeah. thing. Sometimes you have to just, you have to go one of two ways. Either just be patient and kind of let it naturally unfold, you might be more of a driver in life. You might be more confident in relationships. Maybe he's not. You know, the thing is, is everybody has relationships that kind of layer on each other. Maybe he got hurt at one time. Maybe he took a risk and asked somebody out and they said no. You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of different reasons for why he could be just taking it slow. Even though he feels like you would say yes, he's just not sure. So if you can be patient with him, Again, I would let it naturally unfold if your patience is wearing thin and you're really feeling confused and it's kind of overtaking your mind and making you think about this when you should be thinking of other things. Then you might be so bold to just put it out there. Because here's the thing. If you put it out there and he says no or I'm not ready yet, well, at least you know where he stands, right? And then you can, uh -huh. you can, you can go back to being friends. But if he says yes, well, there you go. Now, <laughs> now you're kind of like a source of strength. You're, you're, it's like you're reaching your hand out to him, both hands. You're grabbing both of his hands and you're lifting him up. One of the best things about good partnerships is when one partner comes to another and lifts them up when they're falling down or when they can't stand on their own. And so maybe he needs your strength to pull him up. Maybe he needs to know where you stand before he can leap from one lily pad to another. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I can do that. Yes, yeah, so although option number two seems bold, he, it, that's, yeah. that kinda, that's kind of where they say opposites attract. Maybe in this case, you're his opposite. You're just more of a driver. You might be a little bit more confident. You might be a mo little bit more uh, secure in where you, how you feel about him. And I would be that source of strength. Again, if he says no, or I'm not ready yet, then just say, you know what? No worries. Let's go back to being friends. But now you got the green light to really meet other people because you've, you've, you've kind of asked him and you've gone that distance. Mm, okay. Yeah. But I'm excited. I, I mean, to. honestly, I'd love to know how this turns out. Do email or call us because this, to me, these are such exciting times. And I'm, I think it's going to go well for you. I think it will. Oh, thanks. Well, I'll let thank you know if something happens. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. Thank you so much for calling in. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. You too. Bye. You know, it, it's, it's, it's funny. When we look at life, all the different things that we want to do, we want to start a business. We want to find the right relationship. We have our own personal goals of hobbies or passions that we want to do or kind of check that box or, or check off that bucket list. 
that's what life is about. And especially today being our terminally ill show, when we get to thinking about our final days, the time is now for you to think about what do you want most in your life? And especially when we look at a business, a business takes time to nurture and grow. Same with a relationship. It takes time to nurture and grow. So the time is now to start pouring that water on those seeds and letting them grow. I, I know that one thing is true. When we take a passion for life and we take those butterflies in our stomach and we leap out there and we go for it, that's when amazing things happen. So in our next uh, 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 segment here, we're going to be joined by Rebecca Van Warmer. And trust me, it is an emotional um, story that you don't want to miss. We'll be right back. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Just make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking. Plus much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then... And then nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over until one day I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. 
Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. A professional motivational speaker, Nancy can help you overcome obstacles and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us. This is the Living Full Out Show, and I am Nancy Soleri. And as we were talking about in our first segment, today we're talking about term, being terminally ill. And, and more than that, how we really maximize and enjoy our life, every day of our life, up until the end. And I want to in, invite today our very special guest, Rebecca Van Warmer. She is not only courageous in, in being here with today, today and sharing her story with us, but she has she serves as a great example of living full out despite having breast cancer, liver cancer, brain cancer, spine cancer. I mean, she has really been through it. Yet he, she's here with us today to share with us her story and and all that she wants to do up until that ending moment. So I'd like to welcome Rebecca to the show. Thank you, Nancy. You know what? I have been thinking about you a lot this week. And I and, I, and honestly when I say courage, I mean it cuz um, I feel so honored to be talking to you um, because you have been where not everybody has been before in facing all of these various forms of cancer and just rallying and, and fighting and, and celebrating moments when the cancer went away and then the, the fearful times when it came back. And so I want to start there by telling you just how much I appreciate you being here. Okay. Thank you. Um, now I know that, you know, it was around when you were 35 that your mom had cancer. And I think you said that you found the lump on your breast, like the day before your 39th birthday. Is that right? Yep. And that's not really a birthday present that anybody wants, but (laughs) it wasn't one I wanted either. (laughs) No, no. And, and I'm, and I'm just curious um, you had mentioned to me at one time, before we go into talking about treatments and all that you did with your breast cancer, here you were at 39, the day before your birthday, you find this golf ball-sized lump. Mm-hmm. Now, it's interesting because you actually got tested when you were 30, you got a mammogram when, you, when your mom had cancer when you were 35, right. but then you wanted to get another one at 37, but they wouldn't let you. And why was that? They said that uh, when, I was, when I went for the second mammogram, two years after my first one, they said that um, I was too young to really have to worry about breast cancer, so my insurance wouldn't pay for it. And me being 37, I'm thinking still that I'm invincible, and it's probably not going to be an issue yet anyway. So I didn't go back for the second mammogram, and then I found the lump a year later. And when you found that lump, I'm sure there was a part of you that was like, oh, I should have fought for that I, mammogram. Yeah, exactly. I, I should have paid for it myself. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? Everybody listening, you know, we got to trust our bodies and trust our instincts and, and not let insurance companies dictate our, our advocacy for ourselves. Um, now, when you did find this lump, obviously your mom had had breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Did you, who, did you call her right away? What was the first thing you did? I mean, how, what does one do in that moment? Um, I wasn't going to keep it a secret from anybody. Um, it was just very matter of fact. I had to tell my husband first, and I had to tell my mom second. Those were the first two people that came to mind, and then the rest of my family, of course, brothers and sisters and so forth. Mm-hmm. And what was the first steps towards treatment for you? The surgery was first, and um, I had a lumpectomy. And then um, chemotherapy, radiation, and a drug called Herceptin because I was I was a triple. You, they call it a triple negative. It's actually a triple positive. Um, I tested positive for my cancer feeding on estrogen, progesterone, and this third new discovery that they've called um, HER2. Mm. And and it's interesting because you had you had came up negative for the BRCA gene, which is something that you know usually is a predictor of if you might get cancer if your mom's had cancer. Correct. Yeah, you know they, they they 
sent that test out, and I didn't even know what it was when I got it in the mail, but I certainly didn't enjoy getting the bill. Yeah, <laughs> but it, yeah. That indicated that it was a negative. That's correct. And so how long did it take you to get into remission or, or to be cancer-free in your breasts? It was, let's see, it was about, I did four rounds of chemotherapy, and then I couldn't take any more. Um, so I, I, instead of doing eight, I only did four. And my oncologist was actually okay with that. He said that the, the other chemotherapy would have only been a 10% benefit. And considering the side effects, I was good with having a 10% benefit. I was, I was good with not having that 10% benefit. And uh, I did 35 days of radiation, and that's daily except for weekends. And uh, I was working through that whole thing. Mm. And that was, that was fun, <laughs> going yeah. to radiation and then going to work right afterwards. And Not... Uh, not fun, not fun. Right, and, and, exactly. And, and and what were some of those side effects? When you say that I just couldn't take it anymore, what were some of the feelings or symptoms that you were having? Incredible, incredible fatigue. Um, of course, I lost my hair. Um, mm-hmm. And that was probably the hardest thing to, to cope with, especially only being 39. How did that happen? How did that come about? I was I was actually trying to take a bath. And I decided to change my mind, and I stood up, and I, I had cut my hair off previously so that it wasn't all at once. And I pretty much at this point had um, a crew cut, and I stood up to finish my bath as a shower. And when I got up, all of the, the hair that was on my head, I could feel it washing down my face. And it was... It was incredibly impactful. I started crying immediately when I was in the shower. When I got out of the shower, I shaved my head bald because I didn't want to have to go through that anymore. Mm. Well, and, 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 when, and when you finally went through all those treatments, it, the cancer was gone for yes. a period of time. Yes. And w- what is that moment like? I mean, you go through all this pain, you go through all this fatigue, you, the stress, and then here you are cancer-free. It was a relief. It was an incredible relief, and I figured that it was going to affect me the same way that it did my mom. She went through chemotherapy, she went through radiation, and she's still alive now. It's been over 30 years. She's been cancer-free. Now, this was all in 2012, right? Uh Okay. So in 2012, you went through your treatments, and was it within that same year that you were cancer-free, or did that dip into 2013? It went into 2013. Okay, okay. Well, when we come back, so we do have to go to a break. Um, Mm -hmm. It's in 2014 that you had your next battle with cancer, so we'll talk about that when we come back. Okay. Um, And again, everybody, we're talking to Rebecca Van Warmer, brave woman, courageous in every way, and so stay with us as she continues to share with us about, you know, her journey with cancer in so many different forms. Um, Again, Rebecca Van Warmer, this is the Living Full Out Show. We'll be right back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know. 
wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets. With millions of YouTube views, shares, Instagram likes, followers, and fans across the globe. But what do all these amazing pets have in common? Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a shelter or adoptable pets near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard? Well, <laughs> that's entirely up to you. Visit the shelterpetproject.org and hear more about Hamilton the Pug, Toast, and Keyboard Cat's amazing adoption stories. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Your perfect pet is just a click away at the shelterpetproject.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a trusted life coach, Nancy will help you overcome setbacks and embrace all life has to offer. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri, and right now we're joined by Rebecca Van Warmer, who is our special guest today in a terminally ill show. Again, it seems like such a heavy topic, and it is but when you're with somebody like Rebecca, she just makes, she puts me personally at ease because she's so positive through this journey. And so I'd like to welcome her back to the show. Thank you. Hi, Rebecca. And, and I mean that. You are, and we haven't even got to the end of the story of what you're doing right now for your community. But everybody, <laughs> Rebecca is, I mean, this is a heavy topic, but boy, is she just fun and, op, you know, positive. And so we will get to that shortly. But, um, but let's pick up. So we talked about how in 2012 you had you were diagnosed with breast cancer and the treatments that you went through there. Now, it was in 2014 that you were diagnosed with cancer in your liver. And, Correct. And how did that come about? Um, I was singing in the church choir, and um, all of a sudden I noticed that I couldn't hold a note for an eight count. And also when I would walk my dogs, I would, I would feel pain as well as pressure on my lungs. So I went to uh, I went to my doctor who wasn't in that day, and he the receptionist advised me to go to the ER, and I didn't think anything of it. I certainly didn't think that it was going to be cancer, 
But I went over to the ER following her advice, and they took some scans and that kind of thing. And turns out that the reason that I was having pain is because I had two golf ball size tumors on my liver, and it was so enlarged that it was pressing on my lungs, which is why I was having breathing problems and pain when I did try to inhale deeply, like try to yawn or sneeze or cough or anything like that. Anything that I, that involved expanding my lungs would hurt because my liver was so enlarged. And it wasn't just the two tumors. It, there were multiple smaller ones as well, but the two big ones were the ones that were causing me the pain. Now, here you were cancer-free of breast cancer, but now mm-hmm. you have liver cancer, and you went on to do kind of the same treatment of, of chemo again. Correct. And yeah. uh, did, that, did that cancer eventually go away, or do you still have that today? I still have that today. Um, that, okay. The tumors got smaller. They were, like I said, they were the size of grapefruit. They got down to about two or three centimeters. Mm. But then they continued to grow after that, regardless of the chemotherapy or whatever that I was trying to do. They, it would slow it down, but it, it didn't stop it. It didn't stop it. No. And then in 2000, that was 2014. So mm-hmm. then 2015, you were then diagnosed with brain cancer. Correct. And how did, and how did that reveal itself? My mom came in to, we live in a duplex. My mom lives on one side. My husband and I live on the other. And uh, she came over and she told me that there was a boxer that was loose in the yard. And I absolutely love animals, so I was going to try to get the boxer to come to me so that he wouldn't be loose running around and get hit by a car or what have you. So I went outside, and when I came back in, uh, I had a blind spot in my eye. I was sitting at the computer, and my husband was standing in a uh, doorway adjacent to where I was sitting, and I couldn't see him. I was I was looking right at him, but I couldn't see him. And then I got a little bit scared at that point, so I got up from the computer, and I was laying down in my recliner, and um, I was trying to cook him some um, fiddleheads. It's a seasonal thing. And he was he was asking me, how does he know when they're cooked? And I could visualize what I wanted to say. I wanted to ask him if the water was boiling. And he, I couldn't get the words out. I didn't, I could, vis, like I said, I could visualize what I wanted him, what I wanted him to see, but I couldn't communicate the words to him. And it just came out as, oh, my God, I can't believe this. Is, I, I, <laughs> I was stammering and stuttering, and it just wouldn't come out no matter what I did. And, uh... After that, um, my right hand went numb, and then that feeling came back, and my mouth went numb. And I had to go to work about a half hour after that. And when I was, while I was working, I went to the WebMD, and they were indicating that what I was suffering was possibly a stroke and to get to the hospital right away. So I took the rest of the day off, and I went to the hospital, and sure enough, they did another scan, and... I had brain cancer now. And, and and how many tumors did you have at that time? There were two in the frontal lobe, the right and left frontal lobe. They were about the size of a quarter. And then my the rest of my brain, it was like Swiss cheese. Mm. There were lots you, of little ones. And you still have brain cancer today? I do. Obviously. And then in 2016 you were diagnosed with spine cancer in your spinal cord and all so forth. How did that come about? Um, That one was a little bit more subtle um, in that I could feel the pain coming on prior to getting a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And they did see it in a couple of scans, but they weren't really concerned about it because the, the the tumors in my liver were so large and they were still trying to get rid of the ones that were in my brain, and that it was just one more thing to add to the uh, to add to the fun of cancer. Right. And uh, <laughs> and when it hit my spinal cord, I didn't expect this. Um, I knew that it was in my bones, but when the cancer cells chewed through my spinal cord, it's I at this point I don't have the ability to move my left leg. I am numb in the entire pelvic region, Mm -hmm. and um, 
I now use a wheelchair to move around. You know, it's, it's, it's wild, Rebecca, to have so many cancers build on each other. But you had shared with me that you had done research online, and it was when you started to recognize that there were multiple cancers that that's when you knew that you were going to be dying, that, that this was terminal. Correct. And, again, you're at a place where so many of us have not been. You know, what are, what are you the most proud of when you look at your life, what you've done, but when you look at the time you have left, what, what are you the most proud of, of who you've evolved to be? Um, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, when I moved back to East Millinocket, uh, which is where I live now. When I moved back here, uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I knew when I was 28 that I wanted to own and operate my own doggy daycare, grooming, all that kind of thing. And I had a place to do it. I learned the trade. I, I have done pretty much everything that I wanted to do. This is the one thing that I couldn't, this is the one thing that I couldn't do because cancer got to me first. But I've gone skydiving. I've gone whitewater rafting. I had a bucket list that I started when I was 25. And I've done so many of the, I've gone hang gliding. I've ridden the mechanical bull. <laughs> Love that. See, I told you she was fun, everybody. I told you. I told you. Well, well, what, well when you look at, again, because really at this point, they've said to you there's nothing more they can do. And it's really Correct. just a matter of time. Are you scared? I'm not necessarily scared. Nobody gets out alive. Uh, I'm, I just feel a little gypped because it shouldn't have happened this early. I knew from the time that my mom got cancer that I was going to die from cancer because it just made sense. What doesn't make sense is that I have two older sisters that are seven and nine years older than me, and they haven't had, they haven't had cancer. My mom has two sisters. They never got cancer. You know, it's supposed to run in the family, but mm-hmm. apparently it's just me and my mom and her mom. Well, her mom didn't have it. It was my dad's mom that had it. Mm-hmm. So well, I it know, was, well, I know you're in the process of preparing for a very special Christmas. You've kind of I made am. it your last wish that you decorate your town as much as you can. And, um, you know, that that's coming up. It's coming up here soon. It how, is. How, how are those plans coming? They're They're coming on track? They are. Um, we started pretty early this year. Um, there were no decorations. There were in the past. They have um, put decorations up on the utility poles. It was like candy canes and Santas and snowflakes and stuff like that. And there was nothing last year. Apparently, the decorations were in such disrepair that it was more depressing to put them up and to display them than it was to just not advertise Christmas at all. So they didn't light the tree. They didn't put up the utility pole decorations. The storefront still did their thing, but it was a very depressing Christmas last year. And with the help of a a group of people on Facebook in the area, um, we're trying to do something quite a bit more spectacular this year than last year. We're trying to coordinate, because it's a tri-town kind of situation, we're trying to coordinate a Christmas tree lighting ceremony that's an hour apart. And oh, wow. So it, yeah, it's going to I mean, be... I, I mean, I have no doubt that it's going to be amazing. Um, I just, we have just a couple more minutes left before sure. we have to wrap up here. And I, I guess one thing I just want to ask you is, for what, what would you like to say as your final thoughts today, you know, to our community in terms of when we talk about you know, how we can best help those in your position where you are or for those who are maybe at their final days? The only thing that I can say, I'm not dead yet. That's the only thing that I can say. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I have a feeling, my dear, <laughs> you are, you are, your spirit will go beyond the day that you aren't around. I mean, you have so, I mean, you know, one of the things is, is when we pass on, you know, we, we're, it's not for us to keep you here. There's more work for you to be done in the world right. here and beyond, you know. Right. And um, again, I just value you so much for being on the show. And, and, you know, really, we're here. So we want to maximize every day. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas. I know that you will. And uh, will you keep us updated? Can we have you Absolutely. back on later Absolutely. in the year? See yep. how that went? Good. Good, good, good. Well, I want to thank you, Rebecca, for being on the show. And uh, we hope that you have a great holiday coming up. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. You know, again, courage is the word I think of when I think of Rebecca. And we can all be Rebecca. We're, we're not dead yet. We have every day to live full out in a big way. So when we come back, we're going to be taking your calls. Again, 800-333-0001. This is the Living Full Out Show. That was Rebecca Van Warmer. And uh, we'll be back after this break. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, What? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, Nick Cannon here. So we all know we've got a lot of talent in America. But unfortunately, there's something else we've got way too much of. Childhood hunger. 17 million kids struggle with it in this country. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gather surplus food to give hope to hungry kids and their families. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say, we want you to be okay. Enroll, we say, take care, people, for goodness. 
goodness sake. Health insurance is now affordable and covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. To live full out means that we cherish every day. We don't know when that time in our life is going to come when we're going to be terminally ill. But you want to cherish and the memories, you want to look forward in your life and create new memories. It's all about seizing the day, living full out, putting together that bucket list, taking action in your life. But most of all, just being at peace with where you are in your life and loving each and every day. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a certified life coach, Nancy can help you to overcome challenges and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Well, here we are in the final segment of the show. It goes so fast, and um, but it was also such a heavy topic. But I always come away from the show at the end inspired. You all inspire me. And especially when I even look at today's topic being terminally ill and hearing our last guest, Rebecca Van Warmer's story. You know, we shouldn't fear the end of our life. We just want to make sure that we, we relish and bask in all the greatness of the day and, and the people that we're surrounded by and, and making sure that we can each day make someone else's life a little bit easier that we can spread joy, that we can be happy. And that's really what the whole game of life is about. So we're going to go back to the phone lines now, chat with one of our callers. Hello, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, thank you for calling in. So what's going on today? Hi, I have a question. So Uh um, I don't have the best relationship with my father, and I see that that's kind of affected me in my other relationship with other men in my life. And I don't know quite to do with that. Hmm. Um, now, do you, have, do you have a not a good relationship with your dad? Did your parents get divorced? Did he, like, leave the home? What, what happened there? Yeah, um, they are divorced. Uh, my father was pretty uh, aggressive. Um, now mm-hmm. we have a decent relationship, but I still, it's, I still see it affect me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting, and actually, my parents were divorced as well. Um, my dad had an affair, and he was had a little anger issues as well. Loved him, and we developed a good relationship too. So, so I hear you. Um, he's now passed, but I can I can talk about that. But he, um, you know, the thing is, what I learned, if this helps you, is that nobody is perfect. Our parents, we sometimes feel should be invincible, like they should have it all together. They should be the perfect role models. And I think they should, or they should strive to be, but they're still just an older version of a kid. You know what I mean? They're yes. not going to always make the right choices. And your dad and the decisions and choices that he made are individual, are separate from all other men out there. Everybody is unique. So what I learned a long time ago is I couldn't look at every man as someone who would have an affair. I couldn't look at every man as someone who would have an anger issue, right? I had to learn to see my dad for all who he was, the good and the bad, and know that all the other men in your life, they're going to have their own thing. Some might be, uh, in terms of cons, some might be lazy, some might be um, obsessive, some might be addicted to something in their life. You know, or they might have better positives. They might be very giving. They might be very um, smart, and, and, and maybe that's a, w- a way in which it could help you or serve you in your life. The thing is, is everybody is individual. When you look at the men in your life that you are not giving a chance to, is it in the realm of dating? Is it close friends of yours? In what way? It's um, usually, it's actually both, dating and the men in my life, um, like, brothers and um, close friends. And are you afraid to get close or do you assume or think that they might be like your dad? Yeah, I think somehow in the back of my head, I always seen that they might somehow fail me like my father did. Okay. And do you ever, I mean, obviously your brothers know your dad, but do you ever tell yeah. people about your father? I, I don't. I don't really like to uh, speak about him a lot. Okay. 
So I just invite you to maybe look at that a little differently. You know, not day one when you meet someone, talk about your dad. I'm not yeah. saying that. <laughs> but, but you know, just like talking about your dad, you might want to talk about other areas of your life. When we are vulnerable in life, when we let people in, when we have a moment where we shed a tear, when we tell people about what we fear, what what's, a, what have, what's heavy on our heart, what keeps us up at night, that's how we're all connected. And you might share with somebody about your dad. Let's say somebody you want to date. You might share with them about your dad and say, this is something I'm looking I'm Those are qualities I'm not looking for. You're letting that person know that's not what I'm looking for. I, I don't want to ever be hurt that way. But yet you're loving and you're wonderful. And I'm sure you're de- completely different. Do you see what I'm saying? But if yeah. you don't let people in and if you don't share with them about these fears that you have, they're not mind readers. They're not going to know. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I would, and, and only you can set yourself free from this. Only you can say, you know what? I love my dad. He didn't make the best choices and our relationship is going to be what it's going to be. But I'm going to car- compartmentalize that. I'm going to let that relationship be just what it is unique on its own. I'm going to give all other men the benefit of the doubt. You know, you're innocent until proven guilty, right? Yes, that's true. Right? Okay. Yes. So so go out there and live full out. Don't let your past hold you back from having thriving relationships. Because the, a great guy is out there, and he just wants to love you. Your male friends are out there, and they just want to protect you. you got to let them in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. So as so we kind of round out today's show, again... Terminally ill was the topic of today, but all of our callers have called in about a lot of great topics, and it's all about living full out, maximizing each moment of the day. I want to thank our entire Living Full Out team, you know, Rich and Mindy and Debbie and Samantha and everybody else who puts this show together. Most of all, I want to thank you, our audience and our community. Go to livingfullout.com if you want to hear today's show or any of our shows again. Or if you have a question about today's show or have an inspirational story you'd like to share, connect with us at connect at livingfullout.com. Truly, here's to you living your life full out. We'll see you next week.